How can you bake bread with no power? Let's take a look. Just because you lose power doesn't mean you shouldn't eat well. And if you lose power for a length of time, you may start to run out of the normal things you have kicking around the house like a loaf of bread, and you might want to make yourself some fresh bread. All you really need is a gas grill. Step one with baking any kind of bread is to mix the yeast in water and proof it. That means allowing the yeast to be able to activate. You want warm water for that, but when you have no power, it's hard to warm water up. For this scenario, I'm assuming that we have an electric stove so we can't cook inside at all. So how are we gonna warm water up when we don't have any power? We're going to put it in a cook pot with a lid and we're gonna just put it right on the grill and see how that works. You don't want to have a plastic handle on it because that will melt. And we're going to give that a couple minutes and see what happens. I think we're good. Whew, it is cold outside and our water is about 90 degrees. That should be good enough. So let's proof our yeast. A couple things about yeast. I buy yeast in one pound bricks because we make a lot of bread and then I just keep it in a mason jar. I went to King Arthur Flour here in Vermont and bought a two and a quarter teaspoon spoon. That is the amount of yeast in a single packet, which is the unit of measure most commonly used. Usually they say put sugar in with the water to help the yeast proof. That's probably a quarter teaspoon, just enough to get the yeast busy. If I had power, I would use a mixer. We're gonna do four and a half teaspoons of yeast. That's two packets. Now we wait. So it's great to keep things digitally. I like to keep recipes in a physical book. I write down the recipe and then I'll write down my trial and error to see how things go. Not only is it a good way to keep track of experiments, but also when the power goes out, you may not have cell service or internet access. Having written recipes is going to make it a lot easier to cook when you don't have power. We have very few ingredients we're using today. We're using white and whole wheat flour, some whole oats to give it some of that whole grain goodness. We're using pure gluten. This is vital wheat gluten. You can buy it online or at any co-op. This combined with all-purpose flour turns the all-purpose flour into a bread flour. You can buy bread flour as well, but it tends to be more expensive and this is a cheaper way to go. And then finally, some kosher salt. Oh, and some coffee, because you can't get through the day without coffee. We're gonna do four and a half cups of flour and a half a cup of oats, three, and a half cups of white and a cup of wheat. Two, three, and a half. My understanding is when you get really good at bread making, you switch to the weight of the flour as opposed to the measuring cups because if it's more compacted, it could be a different amount, but I'm not quite there yet. Let's do our cup of wheat, our half cup of oats, four teaspoons of salt. We're gonna do six teaspoons of wheat gluten. If I had power, I'd be using my KitchenAid mixer and a dough hook to do the initial mix, uh, but we're assuming we don't have power. So I've got a wooden spoon and a glass bowl. We're gonna start by simply mixing everything together, and then we will move it onto the counter to knead it. When I start kneading dough, I always put some flour down on the counter ahead of time, and then I coat my hands in flour so that everything's a little less sticky. Now I'm gonna take this and toss it out here. It is wet. It's supposed to be a wet dough and it is a wet dough. You can see I'm using lots of flour with my hands to keep things not too sticky. So I push down with both hands, I rotate the dough 90, I flip it, and then I do the same thing again. I'm gonna wanna knead this for a few minutes. It is quite sticky, but that's okay. We're gonna wanna let it rise in the bowl we used before. Some people put it in a new bowl. We don't wanna make a lot of dishes and a lot of mess right now because there's no power. Now you'll wanna grease the bowl. You can either use some olive oil, some veggie oil, butter. You'd have to melt the butter if you don't have any power. In this case, I'm gonna make my life a little easier and use cooking spray. And we're gonna take our dough and we're gonna put it in our bowl, cover the bowl with a clean dish cloth, and you want to set it somewhere warm. And the next question becomes, you have no running water and your hands are now covered in dough. How are you going to fix this? I actually think that putting a little more flour on and rolling your hands together will roll a lot of that dough off. You can see it just coming right off of my hands. It's almost like it's exfoliating it. And you can see it's just rubbing right off. Good as new. It's been an hour and a half. Let's check our bread dough. That looks good. We are going to take a loaf pan and grease it 
right. And now we're gonna lightly flour our surface, dump this dough out here, shape it, and get it right into our loaf pan. Second one of these would be really handy. I don't have one, so I'm just gonna use a knife. So with some flour on your counter, you can kind of shape this the way you want by scraping it in. Oh boy, that wasn't nearly as graceful as I wanted, but we got it in. We're gonna let this rise for a little bit. So I'm gonna cover this again. We'll give it about a half hour. Let's take a look at our bread. That's what I'm talking about. Now we gotta go fire up the grill and get this thing in there. Well, it started snowing, so there's that. Normally there's a very specific temperature that I cook the bread at. It's usually at 400. Don't know what this grill is gonna cook at because I don't have a thermometer for it. I tried to buy one today, but they were all sold out. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna turn it on high and we're gonna take our bread and place it right on the grill. I'm gonna have the right burner on low and the left burner on high. That should heat this up but not burn the bottom and that should keep the heat going in here. We're gonna close it. Uh-oh, didn't wanna close. There we go. Normally in the oven, I would let bread cook for about a half an hour. You can use a meat thermometer to check bread and see when it's done. We will do that in a little while. I'm gonna give this 20 minutes or so and then we'll check on it. Wasn't supposed to snow today. 20 minutes later. That's actually looking pretty good. I'm afraid we're burning the bottom. So I'm gonna turn the right burner off and just leave the left one on. So they say that bread's internal temperature should be between 195 and 210. Uh, let's check it and see what we've got here. Dead center is what we're looking for. Don't think we're gonna hit 195, not even close. All right, it's been 30 minutes. Let's take a look and see how the bread is. Nope. You can see there's raw dough on our thermometer. So we're gonna leave it in here for a while. One frozen wasteland later. I think that's good. It smells really good. You wanna pull it out of your loaf pan pretty quick. We're gonna put it right onto this cutting board. So having it sitting under that burner that was on low, even low was too much for it. And you can see we burned it a little bit here. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see when we try this out. When bread comes out of the oven or finishes cooking, the crust is really hard. Uh, it should soften up in a little bit uh, now that there isn't heat pulling all the moisture out of it. So we're just gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes. It is time for us to cut our loaf of bread. That is a really good loaf of bread. Good flavor. Hold this together nice. It's gonna make great toast tomorrow morning. The crust is kind of thick and a little burnt on the bottom. That's from setting the right hand burner on the grill on low. It was just too hot for the bread. So what do we learn from all this? You can absolutely make bread on the grill. The way to do it is to set the bread on one side and have that side's burner not on at all. The meat thermometer is the way to go. This requires no batteries at all and will allow you to make sure your bread is cooked all the way through. And I would guess it's gonna take, depending upon your grill, anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes, maybe even longer. Make sure you test it in the center that's the spot that's gonna cook all the way through last. I wanna thank all of you for hanging out with me here at Four Acres in Southern Vermont. Hopefully now you're a little more prepared the next time the power goes out at your house and you'll be able to provide some awesome homemade food for your family. Always do the best you can with what you've got and I'll see you around, take care. You're still here? What are you doing here? Get off the internet, go bake some bread.